Of the many faiths practiced in the world, Hinduism is considered to be the oldest living religion. In India, it has endured for thousands of years and has dotted the landscape with innumerable temples. But there is one that towers atop the hills of southern India as one of the most visited Hindu religious sites anywhere on the planet. This is some unique place. You feel like you are very attached to God. Now, National Geographic takes you on a panoramic tour to lay open the workings of the sanctum. Witness iconic traditions and the jubilant celebration of Tirumala Brahmotsavam at the Tirumala temple of Sri Venkateshwara Swami. On the face of it, Tirupati in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the hectic buzz of any urban city in modern India. Its claim to fame, however, is as the gateway to a centuries-old spiritual haven. Tirupati marks the beginning of an uphill journey through the Seishachalam or Seven Hills Ranges. Spread across 8,000 square kilometers, these hills date back over 500 million years. The journey through these enchanting hills leads to the temple town of Tirumala. For much of the over 1 billion strong global Hindu population, this town holds great significance. Standing at about 2500 feet above sea level, Tirumala is one of the most visited Hindu pilgrim spots on the planet. Drawing an average of 60 to 70,000 people a day and over 100,000 people on special occasions. They all seek entry to the temple dedicated to the god Sri Venkateshwara Swami. The God is the central theme in the 15th century devotional works of Bard and mystic Annamacharya. But the legend of Sri Venkateswara Swami goes back further still. One must turn the ancient pages of Hindu texts called the Puranas to find the mythological concept of the Holy Trinity. Vishnu, the universal preserver, along with Brahma, the creator, and Shiva, the destroyer. It is Vishnu who has a special relationship with the Tirumala temple. One of the temple's four chief priests explains the God's significance. Vishnu is not a name, but it is an attribute to the supreme energy which exists throughout the universe and beyond. These three are the three faces of a single energy which creates, maintains and destroys the entire creation. As the scriptures tell it, Vishnu visited earth several times and in several human and animal forms over epochs. There are different versions but no matter the legend, a steady thread remains. Vishnu manifested as Sri Venkateshwara Swami and the benevolent deity took up permanent residence in Tirumala. It is this God ensconced within the exclusive confines of the sanctum that thousands of people flock to visit each day. The Tirumala Temple a towering example of Dravidian architecture, a style that dates back to the 7th century. This architecture is typified by looming pyramid-like structures known as Gopurams and pillared halls known as Mandapams. 
Gopurams and pillared walls are typically enveloped in inscriptions and handcrafted sculptures that tell stories of different dynasties. Tirumala has endured through the 9th century Pallava dynasty to the 11th century Cholas of Tanjavur. In the 14th and 15th centuries, the temple town came under the influence of the Vijayanagara dynasty. In the 1800s and through the first quarter of the 20th century, the British Empire collected revenues. Finally, in 1933, a special legislative act was passed, creating an autonomous body to administer the temple and associated activities. It was named Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams or TTD. It is TTD that even today is charged with looking after the devotees' pilgrimage from the time they enter Tirumala. Almost every devotee that visits Tirumala has the same goal, to perform darshan or a special sighting of the holy deity of Sri Venkateshwara Swami. मैं जो भी मन्नत मांगता हूं यहां पर मेरा पूरा होता है बहुत सारे तकलीफें जिंदगी में आई है सब तकलीफें दूर हुई है इसलिए मैं यहां आता हूं But the path to fulfilling darshan isn't without effort For the journey is long beginning at the bottom of the hills at Tirupati. There are two modes to reach the top. One could take a drive through the Seishachalam's winding roads and reach in well under an hour. But many choose the more arduous way, just like a 16th century king did, on foot. <laughs> Climbers can choose one of two footpaths. They can pick the Srivari Mettu route, a short but grueling climb of two kilometers. The divine experience, we can say, this uh, yearly once coming to visit our own uh, family god is a kind of an experience that you relish throughout the year. They can also pick Alipiri Mettu. At nine kilometers, the route is longer, but it's a gentler slope that's popular with many. It's basically by word of mouth that I have come to Tirupati. I have heard a lot that whatever you wish does come true. So that has been a wish for a long time. Just wanted to fulfill that. Along the way, one can witness the many ways devotees choose to climb, like anointing each step with vermilion. Some devotees even get on hands and knees crawling over stretches in the climb. And then there are those who just enjoy the hike. I felt the mountain is quite, it's quite small, but when I start climbing, it's really steeper. It's taking quite a bit of your energy to come up. Gali Gopuram is an important pit stop on the Alipiri route, not just to catch a breath, but to register for darshan. Today, the process is streamlined with a computerized token system and the trek itself is dotted with modern-day amenities put into place over decades of administration by the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams or TTD. You have a biometrics here, you have your photo here and this card cannot be transferred and you are uh, provided with uh, 
whatever things that are needed for a devotee to climb up that is given. All pilgrims, whether arriving on foot or in vehicles, reach Tirumala, a town that centers around Sri Venkateshwara Swami. From here, some may choose to take a detour to the Kalyana Katta. A special ritual conducted here leads to one of the most distinctive sights seen all across Tirumala town. Tonsured heads that pop up in every direction one looks. Tonsuring is customary for many devotees to do before darshan. The ritual is considered a symbolic effacing of the ego and the purging of vanity before appearing in front of God. Shaved head or not, for devotees seeking a holy sighting of their God, their time in the Darshan waiting lines begins now. Amongst those in line are pilgrims who have trekked uphill for hours and are now looking at standing for many hours more. Which is why, over the years, Darshan queues have had many resting galleries installed, including the Vaikuntam queue complex. Good thing too, because with devotee numbers averaging over 50,000 a day, the wait can extend up to 10 hours and more. As crowds increased year by year, TTD's authorities have turned to information technology yet again for a simple solution. Pre-booked darshan appointments one can make online. No matter which route, line or queue one takes, at Tirumala it all leads to the same threshold. The Sri Venkateshwara Swami Temple. The main temple spans about 2.2 acres in area, stretching 415 feet in length and 263 feet in width. Devotees pass through the Mahadwaram, 50 foot tall outer Gopuram or tower, entering an open courtyard marked by an ornate flagstaff called the Dvajastambam. As they walk, to their left is the Ranganayaka Mandapam. To the right is the Ainamahel, a hall of mirrors that reflects images in an infinite series. Devotees pass through Vendi Vakili, a silver entrance into the main sanctum, where they come upon the Bangaru Vakili or golden entrance. Within the Bangaru Vakili is a threshold, beyond which most pilgrims cannot go. Here, a series of dark halls leads the way to the inner sanctum, each chamber narrowing in width. Many believe this narrowing symbolizes the soul's journey into the womb of the divine, which is why, perhaps, the innermost sanctum where the main deity resides is referred to in Sanskrit as Garbhagruha or womb-like chamber. The main deity is supposed to be protected from all the natural elements like wind, sunlight, rain, storms to maintain the supreme energy inside. And the sanctum is also a private territory. Only the priests can enter the sanctum sanctum and the other devotees has to stand outside the, that threshold. Many devotees will have to make do by following their line of sight within the Bangaru Vakili, 
If they're lucky, they'll get just a few seconds before their time is up. For those at home, however, there is one way to get a closer look and understand the inner sanctum like only a few can. After waiting in line for hours, devotees are at the threshold of the inner sanctum, inside the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple in Andhra Pradesh. But there's an operational challenge for the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams. Bound by ancient texts known as Agama Shastras, TTD does not have the religious sanction to expand the main temple entrance which means managing crowds through ancient doors that act as both entry and exit. We are governed by Agama Shastra. It prohibits us from making any alterations to the existing entry points to the temple. So there is no other second route for these two specific passages. A single point entry swallows huge swathes of devotees into the sanctum. First, a batch of pilgrims is allowed to enter. Then, inflow is stopped momentarily to allow for exiting. An estimated 4,000 pilgrims pass through this doorway in a single hour on an average day. So we maintain generally a standard of 3 minutes in, 4 minutes out. 3 minutes in, 4 minutes out. Third time, 3 minutes in, 5 minutes out. Because the lines must keep moving, each devotee is lucky if they get more than a few seconds in front of the innermost sanctum or Garba Guha. Finally get to see the ID and the peace that we get in, that's what drives us. Yes. After standing around like hours and hours, when you just stand in front of the DT, you only feel peace, nothing else. Only to get that fraction of second we come down, that's it. The time you see him itself, you forget everything, you only keep looking at him, you don't even know what you should pray to. So you just keep looking at him, that's, that's enough for us. A few seconds may or may not be enough for most devotees, but in this chamber, there are many wonders that might need a longer glimpse. So, where rituals don't allow, ingenuity has found a way. Welcome to the Namuna Alayam, or replica temple, a near exact copy of the inner halls of the temple. It was built in 2008 by the temple sanctioned television broadcaster SVBC or the Sri Venkateshwara Bhakti channel. People wanted to see the glory of Venkateshwara, so we are not permitted to go there. So for that, every commander wanted to see all those things. So we have constructed a replica of the entire Tirmala temple in Tirupati. We are shooting all the sevas of Lord Venkateshwara as it is, as it is, as it, is, it happens in the uh, Tirmala temple. The Namuna Alayam or replica temple bears a striking resemblance to the actual one, especially the Garba Gruha or innermost chamber. It is here that the principal deity or Mul Virat of Sri Venkateshwara Swami stands tall in black stone presiding at a height of eight feet. The faithful know him by many different names including Sri Venkateshwara Swami, Tirumala Balaji, Govinda and Srinivasa. There's no conclusive theory as to who sculpted or installed the idol here and many believe it self-manifested here in its current form. It is this form that's most replicated in portraits and images representing Sri Venkateshwara Swami. But it is by no means the only one because the main deity is surrounded by different idols, each representing a different identity and having a designated purpose and occasion. 
The silver Bhoga Srinivasa idol is the form that most daily rituals are addressed to. There is the Koluvu Srinivasa idol which symbolically officiates temple affairs. Ugra Srinivasa represents the angry form of the god. And then there is Sri Maliappa Swami, flanked by female consorts Bhudevi and Sri Devi. Every day it is this idol that leaves the sanctum for ritual services. And it is this idol that will be mounted on grand processions during the upcoming annual mega festival of Pramotsavam. Whether inside or outside, the sanctum idols are adorned in ornaments made of precious jewels. They are clothed in rich traditional weaves. The devotee loves to present the Lord the best of everything in the creation, like the best of silks, the best of jewelry, the best of flowers, the best of fragrances. The deity's vestments aren't the only luxurious items used in temple rituals, which includes some of the most exclusive natural resources found in India. The forests surrounding Tirumala are part of the Seishachalam Biosphere Reserve. Amongst its most high-value plant species is sandalwood, highly sought for its scented heartwood. The sandalwood uh, was uh, very abundant in Tirumala as well as in the southern states of India. Now because of uh, over exploitation, ill seed felling and uh, unscientific management and unconcerned about the species, uh, uh, this uh, population actually declining uh, to the rock bottom. Sandalwood is used daily in ritual services at the Tirumala temple. TTD's reforestation will ensure that supply lasts for at least a few more centuries. They started with 10 hectares of sandalwood plantation with an intensive scientific management. And this year we are extending to 100 hectares. So this 100 hectares together will certainly serve the purpose for 300 more years for temple. Inside the sanctum, it's not just high quality ingredients that are used to complete the daily sevas. There's also a priesthood of over 200 priests, schooled in some of the most ancient Hindu texts that take years to master. A few kilometers from the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple, inside the Seishachalam forests is Dharmagiri. It is home to the Venkateshwara Veda Vignana Pitam, an educational institute that seems to have stepped straight out of the Vedic age. In the Venkateshwara Veda Vignana Pitam, Nodam of Painalu Samatra Lakritam, Stapin Tabadindi, Manti Utomena Twenty Veda Panditulani. Alangkah dewa ala ya lo cakka ga arcana cerita ni ke samarthan itu ada arca kula ni, lengan perpanjang lo unne war under ke gula pauro hitchen cerita ni ke cakka tu puru hitun ni tayar cerita ni ki, ini benda bignyaan apa itu, untuk malah dalam dewa istana dewa kan sah itu ni. Ancient systems of instruction come to life as students recite texts dating back thousands of years. Like the Vaikhanasa Agama that prescribes virtually every aspect of life and ritual at the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple. Boys as young as 10 years old leave home and abandon mainstream school systems to study the philosophy, metaphysics and strictures prescribed in these Sanskrit volumes. After 
After graduating, these students could eventually make it to the Tirumala temple as one of the 200 odd men that form its priesthood. But maintaining the temple and its sanctity aren't just the preserve of its priests. There is a group that's crucial to the fabric of Tirumala. They are the Jiyars and they literally hold the keys to the entire sanctum, opening temple doors in the morning and locking them at night. <laughs> The Jiyars are descendants of Sri Ramanuja, a prominent spiritual leader and reformist of the 11th century, who was instrumental in prescribing many of the rituals and practices still carried out in the temple. Amongst the temple's most popular traditions is the prasadam, or sacred offering that devotees collect after emerging from inside the sanctum. In fact, it's acquired quite the celebrity status amongst Indian sweets, the Tirupati Laddu. So sought after is this sweet that in recent years it has been patented. The Tirupati Laddu has been given GI or geographical indication status, which means their preparation and quality is unique to the temple. What makes these laddu special? The answer may lie in how they're prepared in a tantalizing blend of modern technology and age-old culinary tradition. A normal crowd at the Tirumala temple clocks in at a whopping 60 to 80,000 people a day all seeking communion with the temple's deity, Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Devotees will expect all the typical experiences of a visit to Tirumala, from the divine darshan to savouring the famous Tirupati Laddu, for which they are willing to stand in yet another queue, leading up to any of the over 60 Laddu counters. The laddu has a special place in the food story of the temple. It's an integral part of Naivedyam, or daily meal offered to the Lord himself. Each laddu is a hand-rolled sphere made from gram flour, sugar and ghee or clarified butter. It is infused with spices like cardamom and dry fruits like cashews and raisins. There was a time when laddu making was done exclusively inside the sanctum's bodu or kitchen. But in 2006, a new mechanized kitchen was set up outside the main sanctum for the preparatory work. Both kitchens work in tandem to roll out around 300,000 laddus a day. Vats of boiling ghee or clarified butter welcome the creamy batter made from Bengal gram. Sizzling deep-fried fragments called bundis emerge. At this point, tradition gets a technological upgrade. Trays of the deep-fried bundis mounted on an automated ropeway. As they ascend up narrow passages, they are headed for a destination where cameras are not allowed to follow. On the other side, waiting to receive the trays inside the main sanctum are around 200 Brahmin priests who roll out each laddu by hand. <laughs> While temple priests maintain religious rigor in the kitchen, laddu trays go through quality checks in the testing labs of Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams or TTD. 
Here we will check the shelf life of the ladoos. For example, today we have taken this uh, big ladoo sample. This will be broken and uh, how much is the uh, dry fruits level and sugar candies, how many grams of there. Usually it will retain up to 7 to 10 days maximum. The testing lab also tests every ingredient used in the making of the prasadams, which includes not just the laddus, but also massive quantities of meals made inside the kitchens of TTD. The Matru Sri Tarigonda Vinga Mamba Nitya Anna Prasadam complex. For around 15 hours a day, the kitchens here boil and bubble away, preparing nearly 65 to 75,000 meals a day. Like the laddus, the meals too are prepared in the Lord's name. The fare is quintessentially South Indian and the ingredients strictly vegetarian. Integral to the menu are coconuts. And how they reach the kitchen is a story of devotion. Every day, hundreds if not thousands of devotees make many special offerings to Sri Venkateshwara Swami. These donations contribute to the Tirumala Temple's resources, making it, according to some estimates, one of the richest Hindu temples in the world. The offerings are both grand and humble. Coconuts, a popular offering to the god, are presented at an altar in direct line with the sanctum making a mountain of well over 100,000 coconuts each day. Once a day, a coconut collection squad rolls around, unlocking the hundi or collection box and shoveling it all to be transported to Tirumala's kitchens. The coconuts aren't alone. All the vegetables used in the kitchen are donations made in the name of Sri Venkateshwara Swami and eventually finding their way back onto the plates of pilgrims. The uh, prasadams also are very sattvic. No uh, extra spices and all that. After being offered to the deity, it becomes prasadam. That has to be distributed to the devotees who come for darshan. And they take it as a token of uh, blessing from the deity. In a Anna prasadam, people will walk in, no restrictions. Anybody can walk in to have Swanvar prasadam. We are having four halls. Each hall capacity is 1,000 persons. Similarly, in ground floor, two halls, in first floor, two halls. Anni born and Shala born, and Sambar Anno got better. Or that was the Dadoshan one better. Or two that are just five hundred better. Or two, that means three items got Shala born and into both of them just The cycle of seating, feeding, and cleaning is repeated in numerous loops through the day, reminding us that when it comes to Tirumala. Managing crowds of tens of thousands is simply business as usual. For a day, year, 65 to 75,000 people are taking in normal days. And special occasions like uh, Brahmotswams and other Ashpias days, we are uh, serving nearly 1,50,000, 1,25,000. Auspicious occasions like the upcoming Brahmotsavam festival turn up the heat for TTD and not just in the kitchens. As the grand annual event rolls around, it will push all temple authorities to ramp up services. TTD, each devotee is lucky if they get more than a few seconds in front of the innermost sanctum. Join hands with state officials to cater to crowds that could swell to over 100,000. We need to do our job much better than what we do now, without any scope or any coordination problems at any point of time. Let us make it one of the finest uh, uh, promotions. You have to be at your best on the Gado Seva day.
The countdown to Brahmotsavam has begun. The town of Tirumala is beginning to transform into a riot of sound and color as it prepares to become one of the most visited Hindu pilgrimages on earth. The hilltop temple town of Tirumala has become the hub for over a hundred thousand devotees here to celebrate the nine-day festival Pramotsavam. Pramotsava marks the yearly celebrations of Sri Venkateshwara Swami's mythological arrival in Tirumala. The Brahmotsava is the mega festival happening for uh, nine days in our temple. And this is definitely to celebrate it to all our uh, relatives, friends and neighbors and everybody. During the festival, grand celebrations take place both inside the sanctum and outside on the streets. Every morning and evening, the processional form of the deity, Sri Malayappa Swami, will emerge from the sanctum. Depending on the day's schedule, he will be mounted on more than a dozen different vahanams or vehicles and carried along the Mada streets around the temple. As the festival kicks off, the atmosphere is a buzz. Special deliveries arrive from India and abroad. From processional umbrellas from a neighboring state to flowers, some of which have traveled across the globe. On non-festival days, the horticulture department goes through anywhere between 100 to 200 kilos of flowers. During Brahmotsavam, quantities skyrocket. Many of these flowers are destined for processional vahanams, which will be witnessed by massive crowds. On any given day, festival or not, managing and catering to Tirumala's crowds is one of the town's biggest administrative challenges. One that needs thousands of volunteers called Srivari Sevaks. Srivari Sevaks are ubiquitous across Tirumala, distinctive in brightly colored scarves as they help serve, guide and assist devotees at various locations. In the year 2000, it was 198 people. Now, per day, uh, there are 1,500 to 2,000 people from across the uh, country, especially from South India. During Brahmotsavam, there will be approximately 3,000 Srivari Sevaks on duty. As they gear up to serve the incoming Brahmotsavam pilgrims, all across Tirumala there is heightened vigilance amongst security agencies. TTD's Security and Vigilance Committee must coordinate efforts with the Andhra Pradesh State Police to make sure the event goes off without a hitch, especially at the chariot or Vahanam processions. We have like fixed cameras, we have PTZ cameras and all these things are monitored. Like just let us think exactly when the Vahanam is moving right from the Vahanam Mandapam. Right from that particular place Vahanam Mandapam till the procession goes and then it comes back to the Vahanam Mandapam, it has been watched. Police department, in any Bandobas we regulate 
but here there is a service orientation for the police department where we have we show the human touch to the service what we are rendering to the public or the pilgrims who have come for uh, darshanam of lord venkateshwara with each day of the brahmotsavam new devotees arrive day 5 sees some of the largest gatherings all here to attend the evening processional service called garuda seva ikkada chavan kandu vachinamu endukante bedi gosi ikkada place dorukadu kabadi early ga vachinamu aina ga ikkada janalu full ga undaru endukante ee roju garuda sham it is very important in festival in tirumala pilgrims still have a long way to head of them meanwhile for ttd's meal service staff this is crunch time they must ensure that devotees are well taken care of with refreshments 3 lakhs of the butter milks one slat already distributed in four mada streets nearly 1 lakh 50 1 lakh 75000 was completed garuda sevan puraskarinchukunna vache atonti a lakhs of people ki we are all already prepared and gear up with our staff so no worry about pilgrim wise TTD's top brass is on the ground personally overseeing arrangements and meeting up with the pilgrims. We expect everything to go as per our original plan and we are ever alert we are monitoring to see that things go on smoothly. As evening falls the energy around the temple is electric. In the control rooms of the Sri Venkateshwara Bhakti Channel, teams are preparing for live television broadcasts. While in security control rooms, everyone is on high alert. And then, the long-awaited moment is here. A gilded chariot emerges in the shape of the divine vehicle Garuda. Mounted on top is Sri Maliappa Swami, the processional form of the main deity of the temple. The jeers lead the way at the ceremonial front lines of the procession. Along the processional route students have come in from the Veda Patishan. We have been visiting here from past uh, maybe 30 years from our childhood. So I visit here for every Brahmotsavam. This is some unique place. You feel like uh, you are very attached to God. The revelry continues beyond a single evening. through the remaining 4 days of Brahmotsavam Each day will bring the idol out from the sanctum mounted on different vehicles some representing mythological symbols in the legend of Sri Venkateshwara Swami others pulled forward by the collective force of his devotees the god will be worshiped in a multitude of rituals observed by the milling crowds on this hilltop temple town the material will meet the metaphysical and devotion will continue unabated in the name of sri venkateshwara swami of tirumala